So I didn't realize when I'm filming in time-lapse mode that it doesn't record sound. So I'm going to voice over a couple pieces on this video. Here I am cutting out a flange. Uh, this flange is going to bolt down to the pinion. This is what's going to have all the flywheel effect. This is where the uh, tires bolt down and it'll actually drive it on the drive belt. Burned up the plasma cutter tip there. Kind of annoying, but no big deal. Keep on cutting. And this camera angle was really crappy. I was just going through, cleaning up all my burrs after I chipped off all the slag, trying to get the edges nice and clean. Uh, I wanted this piece to be as flat as possible so that everything bolted down in a nice way. And apparently mounting the camera onto the drill press makes it just a little bit shaky. Here I am uh, marking out my bolt pattern. Uh, this bolt pattern here is for the eight lug wheel that's going to bolt down. And now it's going to get really shaky. You'll see I changed the camera angle because you could hardly see what I was doing. It was shaking so bad. That's yeah, a little bit better. Now I'm going to go through, use a piece of cardboard, do a little uh, hammer forming, get my pinion flange bolt pattern. Uh, as a pattern that now I can put down onto the flange that we just made and drilled all of our uh, wheel bolt holes in. tracing out and center punching the holes for that bolt pattern down onto the uh, flange we're making. Take it over the drill press and get those drilled out. Here I marked out the center hole because the pinion flange itself has a uh, shelf that it sits on. I had to open up the center so it fits over the top. Knock the burrs off, clean it up a little bit. Test fit, make sure the bolt pattern is going to line up, make sure everything's happy.
Hmm. You have to grind some off of the back side of the drum because I'm hitting the axle on this side and it needs to go over that way close to a quarter of an inch. So I can't get it to actually center on the plate. So do some grinding. Okay, I'm rethinking that a little bit. So on the back side of this drum, I've got this lip right here. This is a part of the machine surface for the brake drum and it's uh, three eighths of an inch wide. Now if I took either torch or the plasma cutter and just ripped that lip off all the way around, I would have all the clearance I need to clear the axle housing. But then I'm essentially gonna take this drum and spin it uh, out of balance because I'd be removing an irregular amount of material all the way around. But what I'm actually hitting on the axle is the webbing for the diff right here. If I just notch out right there, right there, and just a little bit off of the ABS sensor protection guard thingy, I won't have to take any off of the drum. I can just modify the axle housing and three little grinding spots is gonna be way less work than firing up the plasma cutter, ripping that off, and then trying to dress it as a nice edge so it's uniform and stays balanced all the way around. I think that's going to be much quicker and easier. So I'm gonna go that route. So here I took the bandsaw and nipped those corners off real quick, shaved off the ABS sensor guard, threw the drum back up there, went through with my calipers, made sure I had it centered every single direction, traced it out, pulled it back off. Now I've got a nice edge where I know I need to keep it clean, ready for my welding surface, went through, ground it, then went back through with a wire wheel, dropped the drum back on, recentered it again, made sure it was right on where I wanted it, tacked it in place, spun it, made sure everything was good, and burned it in. So right here I came to a little bit of a problem. Um, so this brake drum is 3 eighths of an inch thick. And I have the old brake rotors off of this Dana 60. So obviously I copied this 8 bolt pattern onto my flange over there that mounts the brake drum. Because I'm going to be bolting a tire down right here for uh, driving on the pulley. Well, the tire itself, it's a dually rim. And on the back side you can see got this little bump up right here right where it comes up to the, the wheel mounting surface and this sits on this lip right here so the wheel doesn't sit down flush like I wanted it to so I needed to build some sort of a spacer system I didn't have any uh, tubing that I could build individual spacers out of and I didn't want to spend that much time I have the bolt pattern there. Well, I had two of these, and I only need one of them for the other side for a flywheel, um, or helping with the flywheel effect. So what I did was I took the other one, I chucked it into the brake lathe, and cut the wheel mounting surface out of it. And that gave me this nice 3 8 thick spacer. I had to knock some corners loose in it, just so that it clears the mounting bolts that go down to the pinion flange. But now I have a perfect eight lug, three eight spacer for that wheel to now bolt down on top of. Now I'm gonna throw the wheel up on top, drop in a bunch of half inch bolts, go up and run underneath, put all the nuts on. That was a little bit of stretch of the arms to be able to reach through there, but got it. Went through, impacted them down tested it out, made sure everything was happy. Next video is going to be mounting the motor.